In this video, we're going to look at why negative multiplication works the way it does. And we're going to use some strings to understand why this makes sense. And this is just one approach. It's certainly not complete. Uh, we'll look at in some other videos why these strings have some logical holes in them and why we might need a little bit more to prove the idea of negative multiplication. But this will get us started. So for example, let's start with something simple. So three times two, that is six. And then three times one, all right, what's that? Well, that's three. And three times zero is zero. So I'm setting up a string or a series of equations where the first factor, that's this number right here, is constant. We're always multiplying and the second factor is decreasing by one. And what you might notice is that the product, every time we decrease our second factor by one, since our first factor is always three, the product is always decreasing by three. And this, this is great because this is a simple idea, and if we follow this pattern, we can use what we know about positive numbers to make a prediction about what this product might equal. Well, if we're still following the same pattern, the next product will jump down to negative 3. And we discover our first rule where it seems that a positive number times a negative gives us a negative result. And then we continue this pattern, and we can keep going. But we might see some other things, right? So first of all, these go down by 3. So this fits the pattern, and we like that. Another connection might be that this expression and this expression, right, form two opposite equations. So three times two gives us the opposite product, which is six, from negative six. And we see that this, this pattern seems to fit really nicely. And we can use the same type of setup um, to predict what will happen with uh, negative multiplication, where we're multiplying two negatives. So I'm going to continue from this last expression. Three times negative two is negative six. And now what I'm going to do is change the first factor. So it's 2 times negative 2. I want to keep the second factor the same. So now we have negative 4. And then we have 1 times negative 2. We're decreasing this first factor each time. Well, that gives us what? That gives us negative 2. And then 0 times negative 2. That gives us 0. And let's establish what's happening now. Again, our first factor is decreasing by 1 each time. Our second factor is remaining the same, and our product is doing what? Well, every time we decrease our first factor by 1, it's almost like we're making our total product less negative, right? Because here, 3 times negative 2 means 3 groups of negative 2. Here, we only have 2 groups of negative 2, so it's less negative. So now our product is going up by 2. And at first glance, it might seem like these are going down by 2, but the absolute value is going down which is the distance from zero, but really, remember, as the numbers go closer to zero with the negative values, they're actually increasing. You could think of temperature, almost like value is temperature where the hotter it is, the higher the value. So here, it's getting hotter, so the value is going up by two each time. And if you follow that pattern, we, we eventually come to this equation, and we can use our string right here to make a conclusion, or to predict that it might make sense for two negative numbers to actually equal positive value. And we're using this string to conclude that because again, we knew our product was going up by two each time. And if we decide to continue this pattern, this makes the most sense, right? That two negatives multiply to make a positive. And in fact, we can keep going with this idea. So that two, two negatives here, negative two times negative two would be a positive four. And, that, and that's just a simple start to the investigation as to why negative multiplication works the way it does. Alright, hope that helps.